All right, so today we're gonna be showing you guys how you guys can paint your grill in uh, whatever color you want. I chose mine to be in gloss black and uh, I use aerosol cans. Of course, if you use a 2K uh, aerosol can uh, instead of what I've used here, you're gonna get a much better result. But the idea of this video is for you guys to get a uh, general idea as to how you guys can start with just household products. So these are what the uh, emblems and grills look like um, before they got painted and uh, what you want to do is you want to wash them down with detergent or uh, degreaser and you just want to scuff it down and make sure you get every single area. Um, it's pretty straightforward and also you want to sand it down. I'm using 120 grit sandpaper and use a sanding block. If you use a sanding block you won't get those finger trails but if you don't use one then you'll use you'll get finger trails. Of course, for smaller pieces, you can just use your hand to sand it down. And then once you've sanded and scuffed up every single part, you want to tack it down, uh, preferably with a tack rag. And I'm just using household products, so alcohol and uh, paper towel is what I'm using. If you have a rag, it's going to be much better than using paper towel because if you use a paper towel, then you're going to have bits and uh, little, little bits of uh, dust here and there. And the prep work is really important as to uh, how you'll get your final result. Of course, there's only so much prep work uh, you can do before uh, the limiting factor on your finish is based on the quality of your product. So if the quality of your product isn't that great anyways, then there is only so much that you can do with your prep work to ensure a really nice finish. So we're just gonna wipe this down, tack it down really nicely, make sure that whenever we handle our objects, we never want to get any finger oil onto the objects themselves or else you're going to have to tack it down again just to remove any oils, any contaminants or else there's going to be issues with uh, bonding for the paint. So just going to tack all of this down and you'll see that I have a setup here. Uh, you can use any uh, object you want just to elevate the object slightly so that you can get the bottom portions of uh, hard to reach areas. And you also see that I'm spraying some sort of a solution here. It's actually just water. And the reason I'm doing that is because I don't want any dust to fly up when I'm painting. Uh, you might think that this is negligible, so if you don't want to do it, then don't do it. But you'll see that in most paint booths, at the bottom there's a, uh, a, a, a channel for water to flow through so that water can water holds down and locks down and weighs down all the dust particles that are in the area. And whenever it falls to the ground, it doesn't fly back up. So that's why I'm doing that. Of course, make sure you don't get any water onto your um, onto the uh, surfaces that you're painting, or else that's not gonna work. And I'm also using a filter for a, a gas mask, and this is perfect for lacquer paints because that's the type of paint I'm using. Of course, I said before, if you have access to 2K then that's much better. And I've also got myself a trigger because I find that I control it a lot easier. You don't have to, it's not a mandatory thing. You can paint without one, but it is a lot easier for me to paint with a trigger, which is why I'm using it. So here I'm just going to, uh, you'll see me spray off to the side. I'm just going to paint a uh, primer. Uh, this is my second coat right now. I'm just painting a primer. You always want to paint the hard to reach areas first, and then you're going to dust it on for both the base coat and the primer, you always just want to do light coats. Um, it's pretty straightforward. You don't really have to worry about the finish here because if you just do light coats, uh, everything will just work out perfectly. You won't get any runs and it will work out really nicely. And you will also notice that the texture is slightly modelly. That's limited to the fact that you're using an aerosol can. And here you'll see that I'm done my base coats now and I'm just applying the clear. And I always spray the hard to reach areas first, which is what you guys are seeing me do here. And then now I'm just going to get the top and then work my way down with the 50% overlap for the clear coat. Uh, for my first two clear coats, I'm just going to do it light. And then what will happen with clear coat when you do it light is they'll melt into each other. And then for the last two coats, you want to do it heavy. Uh, you can also just do one final coat of uh, a heavy clear coat, but I want to sand mine down to get a nice uh, glass or mirror finish. We call it glass finish, so that's 100% reflective. Uh, but I have to wait for the clear coat to cure, so that will be saved for another video. So yeah, just get the hard to reach areas first, as you'll see I'm doing here. And then you want to do heavy coats now. I've done my uh, two coats of light, light coats, and now you see that I'm going much more slower 
and I'm really making sure I'm getting a 50% overlap because if you don't, you're going to get tiger striping and you do not want that. And tiger striping is what happens when uh, you'll notice that there's stripes all over your piece of work and the paint isn't exactly smooth or it doesn't look like it was applied on uh, correctly because you've got more paint in some areas and less paint in other areas. So here's what it looks like after five minutes. Uh, my flash time was around five to 10 minutes because it was somewhat hot in the garage. And yes, I am limited to working in a garage. It'd be nice, much more better if I had 2K, uh, forced air for the respirator and a garage that's not connected to my home. So I don't have to worry about the contaminants going inside my house and making the whole place smell like a paint booth. Uh, here's again, the finished product. You'll see that the finish is kind of modally and I'm still waiting for it to dry. And here it is fully dried. Uh, this is after a day and you'll see that I'm going to compare the texture with the hood of my car and you'll see that the texture on the grill is much more modally, which means that it's not glass. So the texture on my car is, I guess you would consider that to be glass uh, compared to the texture on my grill because there's a lot more water. Uh, there's a lot more water peeling or orange peeling and uh, I want to polish that after it's been cured. So I can't polish that right now. I have, to, I have to wait 48 hours for it to be cured. And then I'm just gonna polish it with uh, 1000 grit, 2000 grit compound and then polish. And uh, a separate video will be made for that. So if you guys have any questions, just uh, leave them in the comments below. And uh, yeah, I'll try to answer all your questions. Of course, I was limited to only household products. If you guys have access to 2K primer and um, 2K primer, 2K products, uh, 2K clear coat, obviously that's going to be much more better, but if you're using 2K products, you do need forced air instead of just a gas respirator that I'm using here. And you want to worry about whether or not you have family living inside your house. And because the, the air can leak outside of your garage, if you don't have a paint proof into your, um, into your house. So that is it. And thanks for watching.